If you didn't already know, our recycling system is broken. Well, in order for it to be broken, it would have had to be really good at some point and then something had happened, but really it's always been broken and now it's kind of shattered. Because China stopped importing plastics um, in 2018, that's when it went from broken to shattered. But I always wondered why that didn't change anything I was seeing with my curbside bin. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about why recycling doesn't work, mostly plastic, honestly. That's the biggest problem, is plastic recycling. And it just so happens to be the material that wreaks the most havoc on the environment and that we just really haven't found a good solution for yet. But to put your little mind at ease right here in the beginning, there are a lot of technologies coming onto the market and coming into the recycling like world <laughs> that are really reassuring. Things like chemical recycling that can allow plastics to be recycled indefinitely the way that we're able to do with glass and aluminum. Bills that are holding producers responsible, all that sort of stuff. We'll get into it later. But first let's talk about how our recycling system was broken from the beginning, how it got shattered, and what it's like now. As we go through today's video, I think you're going to realize that recycling is not just putting materials into that blue bin. Recycling is also buying things made of recycled materials because what recycling is, right, is taking this phone, breaking it down into its original raw materials, and then using those raw materials to make another phone. If I'm just putting this phone into a recycling bin and it never turns into another phone, I didn't recycle. I just separated materials. And that is why I'm really excited to be working with today's sponsor, which is Who Gives a Crap. I've been working with them, using them since 2016. I've been using this brand, loving this brand, supporting this brand long before they ever knew I existed. And so I'm really excited to tell you that I use them because they are made of recycled materials. And this whole idea is that it's much better to use materials that we already have rather than growing trees and chopping them down to wipe our asses. So the whole idea here is to close the loop, right? That we have a material, we recycle it, we turn it into another product and so on and so forth. That was my circular system. But aside from the fact that Who Gives a Crap is made of recycled materials, it also doesn't come in one of those little plastic film bags. We love that. It's delivered with carbon neutral shipping and they give 50% of their profits to building toilets so that people have access to that. And they've already donated over $10 million, which is incredible. Plus I don't have to lug home those giant things of toilet paper from the grocery store. This just gets delivered straight to my door and it's really affordable. The price point here is great. Plus you can get $10 off when you use my code, which I'll leave it on the screen and the link will be at the top of the description. Supporting recycled materials. It's key and we're about to learn more about why that is. So let's go. So why did China stop accepting plastics? Can it be fixed? And what are we doing now? And I wanna reiterate one more time that we're talking about plastic recycling. When it comes to things like fibers, paper, cardboard, it's all good, aluminum, most metals. The issue with plastics is it's not a profitable recycling system. So to understand this, you need to understand that plastics are not all created equal, like, well, I don't really have plastic around me right now, but that is the beauty of editing. So if I have a plastic water bottle and then I have like a plastic bag, these are not the same plastic at all. They don't have the same recyclable value. They don't even have the same recyclable quality. This bottle is valued much higher than this plastic bag. For the most part, you wanna think about plastics as plastics one through seven, and one being the easiest to recycle, the highest quality, highest price plastic over to seven, which is the lowest quality, hardest to recycle, sometimes can even have a negative value. But number one are your traditional plastic bottles, thick, sturdy plastics. Those are the ones that you see in some states have a deposit system, and those bottles are worth like five cents sometimes. So Recyclers, they want that plastic. They're going to do everything they can to get that high value plastic out of the bin, out of the single stream recycling. But there's this sweet little spot in here between like three and six where there's some value that could be extracted from it, but it takes a lot of sorting. And that's what's causing the most problems in the recycling system anyway. 
The reason why the higher the number, like six and seven, are hard to recycle is because of their thinness. When things are super thin, it's hard to break them down. Not every recycling facility has the machinery to process that, and so when those plastics end up at a recycling facility where they don't process those materials, they literally have to pay someone to come and get them. That's why those low value materials can cost a recycling facility money to dispose of. So not only is it not valuable, it can end up costing them money. But we have to keep in mind that recycling is a business so they want to turn a profit they have to turn a profit to exist as a business and to exist under capitalism and so right here in the sweet spot between plastics around three to six they need to extract that value to be able to exist as a recycling facility so while I understand how recycling plastics in the US could have not been able to be profitable because of the way our market is set up, like I understood that, but what I never understood is how it could still be profitable to ship those materials all the way across the world and then have someone do the exact same thing we would have to do here, but it would still be profitable. It made literally no sense to me until very recently, and that's why I decided to make this video. Well, a couple reasons, but that's one of the reasons. So the US has always been in a trade deficit with China, and this takes me so much back to like high school economics with those trade graphs, but it makes so much sense once you realize that. The US obviously buys a lot more from China than vice versa. We don't export a lot to China. So when those ships full of goods that we sell in this country, they're literally everywhere. They ship all those materials over to the US, we take them. Those ships have to go back to China, but we're not really sending anything back from the US to China. So those ships are coming over and going back relatively empty. That is how it all made sense to ship our plastic over to China. Because those boats a lot of times otherwise were going back at less than half capacity, it costs next to nothing to put our recyclables on those ships. That wasn't just happening in the US, that was happening all across the world in many different countries. They were exporting their waste to China and it just made sense to be just profitable enough. But that all changed in 2018 with that notice that China would stop accepting plastics. This came from a memo that they submitted to the World Trade Organization, basically where everyone in the world communicates about goods and services and how they're getting shipped around the world. They basically said, here's a memo, figure your own shit out, we're not doing it for you anymore. And I find this to be super interesting because the Chinese government, they're not, uh, shall we say, transparent. So for a long time there was speculation as to why they did this and I feel like that's why I really feel like it's a good time to make this video because we're finally, after years, starting to understand what was going on and why they made this decision. So here it is. So after this memo to the World Trade Organization, there was another document that came out sometime between then and recent years that we were actually able to get a hold of that said that the reason they were doing this is because taking in the world's plastic waste was causing public health issues as well as environmental problems. And on the surface, you might be like, well, it's literally just recycling. It's going to a recycling facility. It's not ending up as waste. So how is it causing environmental and public health issues? Well, one of the ways is because the reason that plastic sorting and further recycling in the US wasn't profitable is because of our minimum wage is because of how our economy is set up. But over in China, they don't have the same system. So people were sorting through this plastic waste, which in and of itself could definitely be hazardous. And because in China, the government runs a lot of the public health care system, it was costing the Chinese government to take care of this huge plastics recycling industry. So if that makes any sense to you, it was essentially at this point, producers not responsible for their packaging, shipping it over the world for the workers in China to take care of it, where it wasn't the recycling facility's responsibility to take care of their workers, that externality was put onto the Chinese government. Now you might still be wondering how the hell this could lead to an environmental crisis because they're supposed to be helping the environment. And remember how we talked about there were some plastics that are low quality or even negative quality? When those negative value recyclables were ending up in these recycling facilities, they had to go somewhere. And a lot of times those materials were just getting dumped. So these plastics that they couldn't recycle at the facility, dumping it into the environment and letting it become the world's problem. And who bears the brunt and the cost of cleaning up the environment? The government. And I personally find this so interesting because it's such a clear example of privatizing the gains and externalizing the losses, right? Producers are getting to sell, 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 sell plastic, make all of these 
insane record-breaking profits and recyclers because they are profiting from these materials and this process, but they're externalizing the cost that comes along with it, human health, environmental problems. Everywhere along the system, things are just not operating correctly. But recycling is a really clear example of that. And those are private issues with businesses, but also along this whole chain, the Chinese government also didn't do their job properly because instead of putting regulations in place or holding these companies accountable, they just were like, mm, it's costing us money and we don't wanna give up our money, so we're just gonna stop. Like if you really think about what a worldwide problem plastic waste is, and it's all coming down to one thing, and that is money. Well. Two things, it's money and capitalism. The way that our world works to only maximize profits and if something that is clearly a benefit to the world and to society, it doesn't matter if it's not profitable. So now we understand how that recycling system was made, how it was broken, how it got shattered, what's happening now? And why haven't I seen the change in what's happening now at my blue bin? One of the reasons is because there's really not recycling happening in the US. We have between 300 and 600 MRF facilities, which is materials recovery facilities. That's why we have single stream recycling because we dump it all into a system and these mechanical processes, materials recovery facilities, sort it all out. After these facilities spit out those things into the categories they need to be, these are called MRF bales, and those are then shipped somewhere to actually be recycled. Sorting, not recycling. And recycling actual facilities like mills and manufacturing facilities, we don't have a lot of those in the US. So right now, my best understanding is we are still exporting those MRF bales um, to countries like Malaysia. And then they're trying to do the same thing China did, but inevitably they're going to come to the same conclusion. So the way we're doing it right now is still just like a a band-aid, what we would say in the environmental like professional realm, a stopgap. At the end of the day, this is a really good example of consumers not really having the individual control to do something about it. You can do your best to recycle, which is also a whole, a whole other portion of the problem, which we could make a whole ass other video about, is sorting your recycling properly, not putting things in there that aren't recycled in your area, making sure it's clean, all those sort of things. That is also important. But these large scale problems are not things that you and I can individually do. We can only advocate for those things to happen. So that's one of my new favorite quote that I made up. Do your best, advocate for the rest look into recycling and how to do it properly where you live, and then advocate for these legislative changes that I'm about to talk about. So the number one thing you wanna advocate for is something called extended producer responsibility. You've probably heard about this, but throughout this video, you heard me say that producers were privatizing the gains and publicizing the losses. Basically what that means is they're allowed to pump all this plastic out and they never have to worry about what's going to happen to it. And the EPR bills are the exact opposite of that. These people who are creating these environmental problems would be responsible for fixing them so that they don't get to just continue to make all these profits and then make their problems our problems. There's really good bills that you can track on this in Colorado, Maine, Oregon. I think there's one in Washington. They're popping up all over the US, but Europe actually has some really good legislation as well. And one of my favorite things that Europe has done is requiring that any new materials that are starting to be produced have to have a minimum quality of recycled materials in them. Because within the system that we live in right now, there are really only two ways to make the recycling system better, and that is extended producer responsibility and supply and demand. Creating more of a demand for recycled materials, therefore we need more supply, therefore recycling becomes more efficient and profitable. But realistically, how you can influence this change is by asking your congressman, your senator, your city council, those sort of things to implement these rules in your city. So extended producer responsibility and requiring recycled materials to be used because we are absolutely not recycling if we're just putting things in the recycling bin and then not buying things made of recycled materials. We should be seeing so many more things made from recycled materials for us having been recycling for decades at this point. And that's why I chose to partner with Who Gives a Crap on this video because they believe in those things. Recycled materials are the answer to solving a lot of these problems that we talked about today. So I hope you learned something new. This was super fun for me to research and to regurgitate to you. Uh, and remember, until next time, actually, you know what? Let's do this one. Do your best and advocate for the rest. Okay, bye guys.